Now that we have sequences under our belt, let's take a look at infinite series. So I start with a sequence, a sub n, and the idea is going to be we're going to try to sum up all the terms in the sequence. So notationally we'll write it like this, it will be a summation formula. So we'll have a sigma, n going from some lower limit, usually 0 or 1, to infinity, and we could also write this as a0 plus a1 plus a2, and we'd let it trail off, assuming we're adding everything somehow. This is just going to be called a formal sum, and we'll call this whole thing itself an infinite series. So let's take a look at a physical example. So I'm going to take the interval from 0 to 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the interval, chop it in half, take what's left over, chop it in half, keep chopping it in half, and then we're just going to add all those pieces back up together. Now, since I haven't really thrown anything away, we would expect that everything added back up is just going to give me 1. So let's see what happens. So the series that would go with this is chop once, that's going to give me a half, chop again, that piece is going to give me a quarter, chop again, that piece gives me 1 eighth, chop again, 1 16th, and so on and so on and so on. Let's do a little manipulation to see if we believe that one will come out. All right, so I write out my series. What I'm going to do is, the trick is, I'm going to multiply by half because that'll push everything over one slot. So by half, it's going to move over to one fourth, one fourth goes to one eighth, one eighth to one sixteenth, and so on and so on. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the difference on both sides. So if I take x minus one half x, that gives me this. On this side, it's going to be the effect of this whole thing minus this thing. These are all going to cancel, and I'll be left with a 1 half. x minus 1 half x gives me 1 half x equal to 1 half. We're left with an x equal to 1. Now, that might be, feel good enough to stop there, but let's use the same procedure on something else to see if it can produce garbage if we're not careful. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to start with 2. I'm going to add 4 to it. I'm going to add 8 to that. I'm going to add 16 to that. Here's the series that goes with this. We can see just physically adding all of these up is going to keep growing without bound. So the limit as I sum all those up is going to go out to plus infinity. So we write that out. Now I'm going to double everything. Now we take the difference. So 2x minus x is going to give me an x. And then on this side, we're taking everything down here. Everything gets shifted over by 1. And then we take the difference. That's going to give me a minus 2 here. So we notice if I collapse this to an x, we have x equal to minus 2. Now, at no point did we add negative numbers here. So the craziest thing that could happen is somehow we wrapped around the positive integers. But that definitely didn't happen. That's not how the integers work. So it should be a plus infinity, but we're getting a minus 2 which tells me that the procedure that we're using is a little bit broken. So we want to nail down what's happening here. So the way we fix things is by carefully defining the process. So we need a definition. Let a sub n be a sequence. We're going to call the sum of the first n terms, okay, s, capital S, sub n, it's going to be the nth partial sum. So the idea is not to try to add up everything at once. We're just going to add the first n terms. That's going to give me a new sequence that I call s sub n. Then we take the limit of this sequence, s sub n, as n goes out to infinity. So the idea here, what is s sub n doing? As I go to the next term in s sub n, we're just going to add on the next term from the sequence. So we're just going to add a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, one step at a time, and then see if that actually winds up tending to anything. If this limit converges to a number s, then we're going to say our infinite series converges to the sum s. If the limit diverges, then we say the series is divergent. Okay, let's look at our examples. So I have my 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth and so on that we were hoping would add up to 1. Our sequence is a sub n equal to 1 half to the n for n bigger than or equal to 1. Our partial sum, the nth one will be 1 half, which has a 1 on it, all the way up to 1 half over with an n on it. 
So that has n terms. We use the same trick we used before. I'm going to multiply by 1 half, and that's going to shift everything over by 1. So the 1 half to the n is now going to move to 1 half n plus 1. I take the difference now, everything on the inside is going to go away, and I'll be left with a 1 half minus 1 half n plus 1. On this side, we'll have a 1 minus a half, which gives me a half. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to clean this up. And that's going to give me 1 minus 1 half to the n. If I take the limit of s sub n, the 1 stays where it is. The 1 half to the n is going to go to 0 as I go out to infinity. Here's the graph of 1 half to the n x. It goes off to infinity. I go down to 0. So we say that the sum is going to converge to 1. And that's what we were hoping from before. We go to our bad sequence, 2 plus 4 plus 8, and so on and so on. The sequence that goes with this is going to be a n, 2 raised to the power n, for n bigger than or equal to 1. Do the same trick. I'm going to take s sub n, rewrite it, all the way up to 2 to the n. That has n terms. We're going to double it, which is going to have the effect of shifting everyone over by 1. And now I'm going to take the difference, so it's going to be the bottom minus the top. That's going to leave me with a 2n plus 1 minus 2. Over on this side, we're just going to have a 2 minus 1, which collapses to a 1. So I take the limit of s of n. Well, the minus 2 will have no effect, but the 2 to the n plus 1, okay, that's going to be looking like this. Okay, it's just this one facing in the other direction. So that's going to go off to plus infinity. So this series up here is diverging. That means there's no sum that goes with it.